Okay, so this is going to be a, uh, a helper video for the accounting cycle project. I'm going to give you some some tips on it. Just before we begin, this is not a can you do my project for me video, uh, but rather it'll be showing a few Excel rules, tips, tricks that can help you immensely on this assignment to help you really get your numbers down, make sure you balance and make sure that you get your uh, all of your statements and everything looking the proper way that they need to be. Uh, just a little note, these numbers that I'm using are purposely wrong. They don't make sense or balance and they are all fictitious so you guys don't need to bother about copying them. Okay, so for this assignment you're generally going to have uh, seven things that you're going to need to do. You're going to have a, uh, you're going to have to write a bunch of journal entries off of information that you're going to have to form. And then you're going to have to post it to a general ledger or otherwise known as like T accounts. Then you're going to have to make a trial balance and then you're going to have to make your financial statements and then uh, have a post closing trial balance after that. Uh, this doesn't include everything in the accounting cycle, just the stuff for your project, but it is a very good uh, resource that you can have. Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you guys is the importance of using tabs. Everything in your project needs to be organized, and so the best way to do this uh, is making your tab. So your transaction information, your beginning balances, your journal entries, your T accounts, your trial balance, your income statement balance sheet, and post-closing trial balance should all be in separate tabs. And a cool uh, hotkey you can use is control page up and page down to switch through your tabs really quickly so you don't have to use the mouse as much and it'll save you a lot of time, I promise. Okay. Okay, so labeling your data and labeling it properly is probably one of the biggest errors that people make on this project. Uh, they'll misname an account and then they can't figure out for the life of them why it's gone or why it's not there. Uh, and it just all happens because they spelled it wrong or they included an extra space at the end. So this is kind of what we're going to be talking about. Okay, so the second thing that I want to talk about is the importance of labeling data. So a lot of times people will just mash together a bunch of information and then they'll forget what they did and then they'll draw the wrong debits and credits and they'll get really frustrated because their, you know, their trial balance won't balance or their general ledger is all messed up. So first thing first is the first thing you need to do um, is get all of your balance, get all of your accounts, just find out all the names of your accounts that you're going to have and just make them set in stone. Okay. Because uh, you're going to have all these transactions that are going to happen and there's going to be associated accounts. So what you could do and what I highly recommend doing is creating a chart of accounts. This makes it so you can have a reference for every single account that's going to be in your project and also making an account type. So saying, okay, well, this is going to be on the balance sheet or this is going to be on the income statement. And then a subtype, like this is an asset, this is a revenue, this is an expense. And then you can just include your beginning balances on this chart of accounts too. So then when you go over to your journal entries and you're going to start your journal entries, you can do this thing that's called data validation. So here I have, uh, I have it set so I can't put anything else into this cell except for something that is on this chart of accounts over here. Okay. And I will show you how to do that right now. So you go to your home. <coughs> Sorry, I got it. You go to your data. Come on. And then you click data validation right here. Okay. So you, and you just say, I want to be a list and I want it to be from this area from here 
all the way to the end. And I did shift control down and that just goes all the way to the end. Okay, so now what it's saying is I can't put anything in this cell unless it's one of these things from the chart of accounts. It'll make your life a lot easier, trust me. Okay, so then on your journal entries, what you also need to do is you need to make your event numbers, okay? So if it happened on A, B, C, or if you're gonna number them like one, two, three, you really need to put these on all of your journal entries. It'll make your life a lot easier. And at the bottom, label all of your adjusting entries and all of your closing entries. All right, so tables are gonna be the next thing that we're gonna show and create. And they'll allow you to make your uh, data filter filterable by multiple fields so you can basically automatically create your T accounts. Um, one word of caution in the coming videos is that you really need to either do relative referencing or make sure that all of your accounts are, you're not going to make any changes to your journal entries later because you're going to have to redo everything unless you do a relative reference, uh, which will help change it automatically. It does take more time, but just keep that in mind. You know, nothing we're talking about in this video is really complicated, but, uh, It'll, it'll all be really helpful. The next thing we're going to talk about is going to be tables, okay? So once you have all of your journal entry information in, I recommend you just copy it. Copy it all, so you just drag it across, you know, you do your control C, create a new sheet, control V, okay? It's all here. And what you should do is you should create new columns and uh, I'm sorry new rows and I just started on 1 1 14 just uh, so it can be chronological and I just say beginning balances and then uh, to bring the data validation in you can actually just drag it up like that and you know you choose your account and you put all your beginning balances in for your account this way because then uh, let's just put a number in so your trade accounts receivables will be like 10,000 okay so then what you're going to do is once you have all your beginning balances in and uh, all of your adjusting and closing entries in on one table it's really important that you have it all in on one you select the whole table and then you're going to go home, format as table, and you just choose one. Uh, I personally like the blue with banded rows. And you say my table has headers because that just makes it so these don't go in as values. Okay. So now the beauty of this is, so this is trade accounts receivables. So we can filter now and let's trade accounts receivables. I don't know if there's any other entries besides the beginning balance. Boom, there's, this would be your T account for your trade accounts receivables. Or you can do, you need to select all and then unselect it again, or else it'll include more than one. Uh, another thing you could do, let's do bank account. So your bank account, so this is your T account for your bank account. Okay, you include chronologically and then numerically all of the uh, transactions that you recorded for your journal entries right here in one spot. It's really nice because you know these numbers are true, you know it's all of them because you did the data validation, you couldn't mess up anywhere, and they're all here. So now to make your T account, you can just copy this, you can go over to your general ledger, and you can paste it right there. And you can format it however you want. You should probably take this out. Um, you know, uh, delete all those. Uh, let's see. All right. 
Delete all those. Let's go to the last shared. Get the game found. And then, uh, you know, it's your bank account to your account. Give it your side view. I have one that's already formatted right here. And it has a date, event, debit, credit. You have the little border to make it a T. Then I have my ending balance. So just for uh, those of you that want to do go the extra mile or figure out how to use Excel a little bit more, there are, there are three ways that you can generally do your T accounts. One of them is just the table and reference like we did. Uh, you can also use dynamic referencing where you just reference the sheet that we had instead of copying and pasting values. Another way, you can actually make your entire, all of your T accounts with uh, pivot tables. It's possible, it just takes a little bit of adding some extra columns to figure it out. And another way is just to do it through VBA. Any of you that are like programming, there are ways to do it in Visual Basic for applications that just makes life uh, that much more interesting. Okay, so for those of you that skip to the end or listen at double speed, here's the recap. Okay. Don't forget to use tabs at the bottom uh, you know, of your Excel sheet. Using multiple tabs really helps you organize your data. It gets everything in a nice organized way so you can follow the flow of the accounting cycle and you don't have to scroll down a million lines on in Excel. Create a chart of accounts that has all of the accounts you're going to be using for your projects and then create the beginning balances on it and then describe if it's going to be a uh, you know, asset or on the balance sheet or whatever. Next is you da use data validation from your chart of accounts so you don't mistype any of your account names and end up wondering why your accounts don't balance. Third thing is to automatically create your T accounts for you. You just need to convert your, add your beginning balances and convert your data to a table and then filter it. Uh, and then just with a few minor edits, you have your T account ready and it looks nice. Don't forget hotkeys, control page up, page down, control shift, down arrow. It'll save you a lot of time. The less you have to touch the mouse, the less time you'll actually have to be spending on this. Another thing is using cell referencing to eliminate typos. Instead of maybe copying and pasting values, just make it equal to the value so you don't have to change every single entry if you have to change some of your information if it doesn't pass or something and that's it i hope you listened to double speed i hope you didn't waste any of your life sorry if you did uh, i can't pay you back for that but anyway hope you enjoy it